In the heat of a presidential election here in the U.S., there's a new film out this week that takes a hard look at the political process, freedom of speech, and religion. It asks the question, does God still have a place in American politics? God's Not Dead, In God We Trust, premieres Thursday, September 12th in theaters from Fathom Events. And there's a cameo in the film by somebody you might recognize. But here with me in studio, in our, in our D.C. studio, a few stars of the film, Scott Bayo. David White and Samira Armstrong. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm going to start with you, David. Uh, you were reprising this role that we know well, uh, Reverend Dave Hill, in this newest installment of the movie. The plots of these movies have been really about bringing God into the public sphere, or at least engaging questions about God there. This is kind of Pastor Smith Goes to Washington. Tell me how this fifth movie in the franchise came to be. Why resurrect this character again? Well, first of all, thank you for having us on. We appreciate it. Um, uh, well, you know, uh, in this story, uh, the incumbent dies. Yeah. There's a seat in Congress that is a very pivotal seat. The opposing guy that's running wants to stamp God out of culture, out of country, and they come to my character and they say, will you run? There's only six weeks before the election, and of course, I don't want to run because what Christian wants to be involved in politics because it's a dirty business. Yeah. It is a dirty business. We're going to get, I, I want to give people a little taste of what uh, they can expect. This is the trailer for God is Not Dead in God We Trust. Watch. If we ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. Now more than ever, Christians must realize that we are being called to deliver hope to a country that's feeling hopeless. Faith begins where your comfort zone ends. We need to step out into that faith. We're six weeks out from election day, and a lot of folks have lost hope in the future of our country. We must maintain a wall of separation between church and state. Religion has no place in the public square. Once they bankrupt our country, they will have complete control. Where did we go wrong, Lord? We need someone who can light a fire in the voters. A preacher. He helped on those education hearings. I've been hired to manage your campaign for Congress. I'm not a politician. If you don't take on this fight, we could lose everything. I found someone to run against you. Are we worried about a preacher? My next guest is a candidate for Congress. You're going to get a lot of questions about your faith. Well, maybe people are looking for more spiritual and moral leadership in Washington. You're making God an easy target for them, Pastor. God's not the target, Lottie. Our country is. God's just standing in their way. I will not be made a fool of. I won't stop until your moral high ground crumbles beneath your feet. You don't win unless you play by their rules. I feel like I have two options. I can either do the things my faith asks me not to, or I lose this race. It's like God keeps putting these impossible mountains in front of me. Perhaps God put those mountains in front of you to show that they can be moved. Please pray for David, guys. In God we trust. This contest is about shaping the future of our nation. Keep your boy in line. He's like his God. I can give it, and I can take it away. How do you know it's God? Reverend Hill, your beliefs are a textbook example of Christian nationalism. Whenever anyone of faith promotes a policy that you don't like, you label them a Christian nationalist. We need to stand up. Send a message to Washington. Tell them you're not ready to give that power up. You have the power to change things. Not me, not him, you. In God we trust. And without God, democracy will not and cannot long endure. As you see in the trailer there, Reverend David Hill is really against this secularly aggressive opponent. Tell me, if you will, how you experienced this in a real personal way <laughs> when you tried to have a screening of the movie here in Washington this week. Yeah, I'm not going to blame Scott Bayo. No, no, don't uh, for do this, that. You know, or but, Ray Wise. Uh, or Ray Wise. No, I'm easy to blame. They don't want me in this town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were we tried to do a screening uh, in the Capitol in the Visitor Center yesterday. Uh, and what happened, Scott? I'm sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> Um, <laughs> screening. This, is, this is how it was on set <laughs> yeah. with uh, Mr. Bayo. No, we, they, we, we have, by the way, we have, we have to thank too, uh, Speaker Johnson and, and Jim Jordan for helping us out. But we had it in this beautiful theater, 
And when when the uh, when the other side of the aisle, the Democrats found out what kind of film it was, that it was a faith based movie, uh -huh. and it was a film about um, um, freedom, uh, that freedom, of freedom, and freedom, freedom, freedom of, of election, and having that forty million Christians that don't vote. Mm. Uh, getting them out to vote, which is one of the messages of the movie, they decided to shut it down. Huh. And and it's ironic because that you know the the capital is for the people, yeah. <laughs> but apparently not. So they just said, well, we're not going to we're not going you're not going to be able to show the, this movie in this uh, room. And they threw us in some other little dinky room. Yeah, you're in a conference room yeah, now at the with, Rayburn with, building, yeah, which yeah. is really enraging because that visitor center, first of all, I was opposed to even having a visitor center. The entire capital is your visitor center. Yeah, well. But they didn't want to mix with the grubby or outspoken voters, so they wanted to contain everybody, and they spent billions digging a hole on the north lawn of the capital to build this visitor center. And now they're saying people can't have a freedom of speech or freedom of religion in that space, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I so they say. boxed us out, and, yeah. and it was not because of the message of the movie. Horrible. Scott, tell me what drew you to this project. You play Wesley, who is the campaign manager to State Senator Peter Kane. Well, they paid me a lot of money, Ray. I mean, what, 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 what are you crazy? <laughs> joking. I'm joking. Um, I, well, first of all, I like the other movies. Uh, David is a friend of, uh, of, of, my, of me and my family. We, our, our kids go to the, used to go to the same school back in Los Angeles. Mm. Uh, but I read the script, and I thought it was just a fun role, and I, and I love the message of the movie, uh, which is that 40 million Christians don't vote, and I'm sure that a large percentage of those people complain about things in the country. And I thought, well, if you people would get off your rear ends and vote, you might affect change, the change that you're looking for. And, and, um, and, and because I have a daughter, I want her to grow up in the country that I grew up in, Ray. Yeah. I want to show people a little clip. This is uh, you and Ray Wise. Great scene. Pete, Hill just got real money, which means real media buys and real influence. Mm -hmm. Now we can afford staff, rallies, office space. Be a mistake to underestimate this guy. Sure. People love an underdog story. So what do you suggest? Senator, great speech. I suggest we put a debate on the books and end this. But we have to control it. I like the podcast. No, that was child's play. This is where you finish him. Wow, Charles is still in charge. Hardball politics. Tell me about Wesley, and did you enjoy playing the heavy? We, we really don't usually see Scott Bayo in a role like this. It's more fun than you could possibly imagine. It, it is because you have Why? a lot of, because you have a lot of freedom. You could like there's a scene with Samir who's going to come on here, uh, where uh, we, we we have a we have a history in the movie, and I I would say things to Samira as her character things and, you know she would look at me and I'd say well, I'm just going to throw it out there because I start making fun of her weight because it's, I'm just a creep. Yeah. And so when you're a bad guy, you can say. Pretty much anything, and the director can go, it, you know, just take it back yeah, a little bit. Pull that back just so a bit. So ha you have tremendous how, freedom. How do you make fun of Samira's weight? Look yeah, at her. Right? I mean, my gosh. You, you, she's you, beautiful. You, it looks like she spends every minute in the gym. Just look at her. Samira, I haven't forgotten about you. Uh, in God's Not Dead, you play Lottie, who is Reverend Hill's newly appointed campaign manager. Um, I, I'll, I'll play a little clip of this, and then we'll, we'll talk on the back end. Watch. I didn't run because you or Daryl talked me into it. I believe God asked me to. How do you know it's God? Well, you know someone long enough, you begin to recognize his voice. But sometimes knowing it's God is easier than actually listening to him. Well, why wouldn't you listen to God if you knew it was him? I don't know, right? For most folks, it's fear, afraid to fail, afraid to take a chance. But sooner or later, we all get hit by that storm. Samira, so tell me how your own experience running for office in Sedona, Arizona, you ran for mayor there, did, did that influence your portrayal here or give you any background into this character? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the. A path in which I ran for mayor was far different than the campaign manager character that I play in this film. I, in my own campaign, uh, operated f with morals and integrity, and um, that seems not to be the theme in, in most campaigns. Um, mm. And Lottie's 
my character, she played r ruthless and uh, very aggressive, which is the tug of war between her and Pastor David is uh, playing by the book of unethical choices mm. versus the morals that you live by. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what surprised you about this as you got into it? And I'm going to talk in a minute. I know there was some revisions once you shot this movie, mm -hmm. but um, d did any lights go off when you read the script or when you saw it on the screen? Yeah. I, you know, I've been really driven to ha lean more towards faith-based projects, even in terms of I love telling stories where you get knocked down and then you have to pick yourself up and find out what, figure out what the right direction mm -hmm. and path forward is. And this this film has that. I, you know, apart from just trying to motivate people to vote, it, it really, I think, inspires the audience to get uncomfortable and mm. and find themselves on on a journey of standing up for their country. And even when you think that that maybe isn't the position that you've meant to be led to, and and yeah. really we can all take from that. That Dave, story. I, I want to go back to David. David, Reverend Hill is an earnest but reluctant candidate in this movie. Are you trying to inspire others to, to run for office or just to allow their voice to be heard? I, I You know, I think uh, the God's Not Dead movies are special because they somehow uh, radiate what's going on in culture at the time, right, for such a time as this. And mm -hmm. our country certainly has gone through a lot of turmoil and uh, in different ways, like Scott said, even, you know, it's not the country that we grew up in. Mm -hmm. uh, we hardly recognize it anymore. And so with this, the, the idea that 40 million American Christians, the stat that 40 million American Christians don't vote in presidential elections and that 15 million out of that 40 aren't even registered to vote, this movie hopefully is about taking that step, going outside of your comfort zone for the things that you, maybe you don't want to get involved in, you don't want to do, but God calls us for such a time as this to step out. And, uh, and, and that's really the heart of this movie. Scott, you were raised Catholic mm -hmm. and um, returned to faith a few years ago. Uh, you were rebaptized. Has that influenced not only your participation in this film, but your approach to work in general, has it changed the way you look at projects and what you'll do or not? Sure. I mean, I'm more, more inclined to do things like films with David and these, and these types of movies. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, uh, Ray, I, I said this before. I, the reason I do this is because I believe also because I do it, I do it for our daughter. Uh, I do it for her. So the, the country that she will inherit will be something that I remotely recognize. Mm. Yeah, boy, has the world changed since. Yeah. I mean, so many of us grew up watching you and grew up along with you in Happy Days and Charles in Charge. That era seems to have that we had unity despite it's like our we lost differences. Happy Days. Scott. Yeah, Happy yeah. Days aren't here right now. I, I, I'm with we you. want them again. Happy I'm, Days. Back you should do a reboot yeah. on Happy Days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, happy you, days are here again. Well, that's that'll be in. that'll be after this movie yeah, is released. No, we'll do, I'll happy to do it if it helps. I mean, I'm, I, I, look, I'm, I'm that. This one of the reasons why I am so excited about doing films like this is because mm. I, I really, I really genuinely, I gave up so much stuff when I came out for Trump in 2016. I gave up my career basically, wow. and I knew it, which was fine. But I do it for my child. Hmm. Brave. Uh, Samira, you, you've spoken about how you believe God led you to this project. How so? And how does your faith shape or influence the roles you play? Yeah, I, I've come to understand my faith a lot more deeply in, in the last four years, going, given what's going on in the country. Um, I, after I ran for mayor, I was really questioning what I was going to do with my life. And I, I do believe that God gave me this gift of storytelling and I was inspired to pick that back up. I too spoke out um, in support of President Trump. Um, I did in 2020, and um, you sort of trade your career for your beliefs if you're willing to do that. And but I, I did feel that al along the process that God was with me the entire time, and there would be an other side. And I do mm. believe this is the other side. So I'm excited. I'm excited to tell other stories that uh, revolve around these sort of narratives. It's a great pity to me. You know, there was a time I was just watching. A, um, it was a, someone sent me a because I'm a huge Sinatra fan. And it was Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin uh, doing a fundraiser for Ronald Reagan in 1980. And you had Charlton Heston and uh, uh, Fred McMurray, these huge actors there. 
And I thought, what happened to the time where you could come out and support the candidate of your choice mm. and not have to pay a political price? In fact, you just went on with your business because it was assumed everybody disagreed. What happened there? What, what, what changed in your industry? Hollywood. It's <laughs> a good question. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Hollywood um, became I, I the think, propaganda uh, machine. I, I think that it's media-driven. I think it's uh, the news picked sides uh, and started propagandizing. It's a great question, though. Like, yeah, when did that happen, though? When did, yeah. it, when did the media turn, too? You yeah, know, I think it was probably. I, I, of, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, be it's a, a great, question. it'd be a great study. CNN. Yeah, it really would. I mean, because it, it was like all of a sudden, everybody just hated yeah. each other. Well, yeah. and everybody had to have one mindset. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and they'll blame Trump now. Now they would say, well, it's. I know, but if you go back, no, Bush, I know. Obviously, Bush got this happening. treatment. Reagan got right. this treatment. It's I Republicans. Mean, it, yeah, it, right. it became a partisan divide that I don't really understand. The country's always been divided politically, but there were the things that united us, and it seems those things have been torn asunder. Uh, uh, let's get back to the movie, because this movie is really trying to unite people around the things that hold us together, principally faith. And the God Is Not Dead series has done incredibly well. The first film, worldwide success. Ten years least, ago. Ten years ago. Ten year anniversary, yeah. And, and I mean, you had a what, $1.5 million budget? It made uh, $65 million at the box office. What keeps people coming back to this franchise? Why are they hungry for this? I think because it opens up conversation that you, you don't normally have. You don't normally want to, you know, there's not a lot of movies that, uh, that obviously that Hollywood puts out about <laughs> inspiration, faith, yeah. you know, uh, conversations. Hey, let's talk about this with your friends, family, coworkers. Uh, it's not wrong to be open and honest mm -hmm. about your beliefs, right? And that's what the Gods of Dead franchise, I think, what makes them so sweet is that mm -hmm. they are at the core, they're, they're about hope, they're about inspiration, to bring people to higher levels of insight to who God is yeah. and the purpose that he has for their lives. You, you've got an incredible cast in this movie. I mean, th yeah. those that are assembled here around the table and in our other studio, Dean Cain, Governor Mike uh, Huckabee, Isaiah Washington. Uh, Raymond Arroyo. Well, that is a sad little surprise. You see, when I first read the script, I have to tell you, David, I read the script, I thought it was about a TV anchor who manages to pull off a high-stakes yeah. debate. And then I realized there was much <laughs> more like, to this where are all my pages. Yeah, what I happened to the rest pages. of this? You know, it's like the guy who was in Streetcar Named Desire. He thought it was about a guy who sold flowers to crazy people, you know, and he was just a walk-on at the end. But you all went back. We, we shot two debate scenes, we should tell people, a little yeah. behind-the-scenes uh, coverage for you guys. W there were two debate scenes that were shot. The first one was scrapped because you rewrote the script. What did you add? What, what did you What did you add to the script? Well, first and foremost, needed? we added more Raymond Arroyo. No, you less <laughs> Raymond Arroyo. One scene was totally chucked out. You redid the debate scene because we you did. wanted to kind of yeah. Heighten well, I mean, you know, clash. it's like every single time you wake up in the morning, you you realize there's something different in the news, right? Yeah. And so the movie was uh, Tommy Blaze, who's written the last yeah. three of these, and he's such a great writer. Uh, started three years ago, which is, it's astounding that, that it's for such a time right now, right? And of course, as you, as you, you know, go on, yeah. you start to, to put in some more of these things. Um, and that's part of the, what the reshoots were. Well, guys, it was nobody's fault. It was not Raymond Arroyo's <laughs> fault, for the record. I thought the scene <laughs> played beautifully. It was. But, but you all did layer in more of the religious conflict. This yes. idea of being outspoken in your faith. And yeah, Christian nationalism, things of that mm -hmm. nature that have been, mm -hmm. you know, on the front headlines that uh, yeah. it's, it's, you know, I, I think it deserved to be um, spoken more about. Yeah. David, Scott, Samira, thank you all for being here. God's Not Dead in God We Trust is in theaters now. For more information about how to get tickets in your area, go to godsnotdead.com. Thanks again, guys.